Well, hello everyone. This is DC with the DC Capstone Report. It's great to be back with you this week, uh, Monday, October the 5th. We'll have this podcast posted up later this afternoon. And just want to thank each and every one of you continue to tune in and listen. Uh, I just want to take time in our opening segment today just to, to say that, uh, you know, we're just uh, amazed at the number of people who have reached out to us and questioned us about our podcast and just that you listen to it every week, that you enjoy it. Thank you. The comments are helpful. Uh, the likes are helpful. The shares are helpful. We really appreciate that. If you don't know, the way this got started was this was a uh, the idea of my best friend, Gary Shores, uh, who was worked for 25 years at the Bryant Museum, and he and I helped start the Bryant Museum uh, with Emily Moore. We were the first, student, uh, uh, the first students to work there. So uh, he, uh, can, he had an idea that after he retired, uh, from the museum that he would help me do a podcast we would do it together and he did all my production and i did the voiceover and that's how this got started well unfortunately i lost my best friend a couple of years ago gary passed away from a heart attack and i thought it was the end of our podcast but i just want to credit today lance shores his his uh brother lance stepped up to the plate and offered to volunteer his time to do all the production uh, and take care of everything on that end all i had to do is the voiceover and and, and do the research and so it has been a fun ride uh, the last couple of years with Lance doing it, and, and and I just want to thank Lance. He does so much for this podcast in the production and, and the in the pictures. And one of the things he does is takes beautiful pictures of the games. And and so uh, this past week, he and I had the pleasure of going to the Texas A and M game, and he brought his cameras and he took many pictures. So we'd have plenty of stock photos throughout the rest of this season for our our podcast and for our, our website. And so. I just want to thank Lance for doing all that. And for all of you that are listening, uh, he has a website. It's called FreelancePictures.com. FreelancePictures.com. You need to go to that site. He has published there all of the pictures that he took from the Texas A&M game. He has some great shots there of multiple players. So uh, if you know a player who wants to see some shots from the game of them them in action, uh, he has great shots there. So go to FreelancePictures.com and check out the pictures that Lance took from the Texas A&M game. Also, you can check out our website at dccapstonereport.com. If if you're actually listening to this on our Facebook page, we also have our own website, dccapstonereport.com, where you can also see some great photos and videos from the game. But it was a great game, a great game against Texas A&M. We had a great time there, great atmosphere. Uh, It was great to get back to some normalcy here in Tuscaloosa. Uh, and, and have a game. So it, it, it was really good to see the, t- the, the, the players uh, perform so well, but also see the fans, uh, social distancing, wearing their mask. Uh, I know there was some posts that, that were made on social media and some pictures that were questioning, but I would say that uh, 98% of the time at the game, you saw people with their mask on and people social distancing. So I give credit to Greg Byrne and his staff at the University of Alabama for putting the, the, the players safety and the and, and the attendees uh, who, who work the games and also the, the these fans safety at, at, at the forefront and social distancing so it was a great game overall and and just uh, really look forward to to uh, continually to see how great this team does in the days ahead well today on the podcast in the first segment we're going to review the texas a m game in our second segment we're going to talk about our standout players of the game in our third and final segment this week We're going to preview our upcoming game on Saturday, October 10th against the Ole Miss Rebels. You're listening to the D.C. Capstone Report. The D.C. Capstone Report is featured each Tuesday morning on the Martin Houston Show at Tide 100.9. You can listen live at Tide100.9.com. Well, it's great to be back talking about football again. Had this past week's game against Texas A&M. What a great game it was. Alabama comes away with a 52-24 to victory. Uh, in this first segment, we're going to review that, that, that uh, game against Texas A&M and just see what we learned uh, from, uh, from, from the, the game and how it, how it went, how it went the, the, the entire game. And, and, and I think this was probably – uh, a really good picture of what Alabama can be. Uh, now there's some coming out of this game with some things to work on, but right off the top, I th- I want to say I thought it was a good performance overall on both sides of the ball. I know Texas A&M scored some points, and I know that uh, we gave up a, a, a turnover. But when you look at this overall pers- 
perspective and put in perspective, that turnover was a was a tip ball. Uh, it was a thrown to a, to an open receiver, but just ball got tipped and and was intercepted, and that put Texas A and M in a, a good position on a short field uh, to for the for the defense to have to come in and adjust and stop them. And so I, I think that uh, overall we really did a good in that game. The other thing I think that was important is the effort on that play. If you go back to that play, there were many great plays in this over, in Texas A&M game. But if you look at that play, I think that one of the things that will get Najee Harris noticed more this year will be that play continuing to run between uh, the NFL scouts that may have been at the game or find out about it. Now that play, Najee Harris was the intended receiver. And you see him come in at the last minute and what I saw today, uh, Dr. Ray posted the, the, a fact from the game that the fastest Najee Harris ran all game, his top speed was when he ran down that ball uh, defensive lineman who intercepted that pass and tackled him, saving a touchdown. That's an effort play. Uh, and that's what I think was missing last year from a lot of the plays at Alabama, the effort plays. So I am, I am very excited about seeing an effort play like that. Another thing that I'm excited about that looks negative is the things that we can fix. And that is we had some blown coverages by our uh, linebackers uh, in trying to decide who to, who to push off, who, to, who has who in the field, and they, they scored some on, on uh, and, and got us confused by running plays out of the backfield, running the tight end and crossing routes. And so I think that's really good. Why? Because it gives us something to look to to fix. And those are things you can fix. Uh, Coach Saban spoke after the game about it. Those are things, the mistakes we made are fixable mistakes. So you go back to the drawing board, you have something to show your players, and you show how so that other play, other teams down the road don't take advantage of it. And believe me, teams will be watching that to see how Texas A&M moved the ball. And that was throwing to the back out of the backfield. So watch for Alabama to correct those mistakes. The other thing I think in reviewing this game that I saw as a negative uh, was the penalties. We had too many penalties and we had we had errors on across the line of scrimmage on players who were false starting uh illegal procedure illegal shifts uh, a lot of things like that can be corrected but we've got to work hard on correcting those mistakes we can't have we can't let turnovers and penalties put us in bad positions now in this game the one thing we don't need to do is rely on the fact of our athleticism and explosiveness to make up for those things in this game we were able to make up for it uh, those mistakes, but in games that to come, we may not be able to. So those are the negatives that look negative on the surface, but actually could be a positive down the road for learning experiences. One thing we know is Coach Saban says, never uh, misuse a failure. In other words, don't misuse the opportunity when in your failure to get better. So don't forget about it. Correct it. Get better to a point that you can use it to go down the road. And I think that's what's going to come out of this game, this Texas A&M M M game name. Texas A&M game will be known for is correcting mistakes and see how well between the second and the third game that we do in, in some of these areas. Some of the good things about this game also had to be the passing game, the play of our passing game. And when you say the play of our passing game, that means the quarterback, the wide, the, all the receivers, the running back, and the line all did their jobs in order to make in order to have these explosive plays everybody has to do their job it's not just the quarterback it's just not the receiver it's the lineman it's the running back picking up the uh, the blitzer and it's everyone doing their job and i think we had that in this game to a to a, to a, a certain extent where everybody did their job in most every play uh and got the and got the ball in the hands of our playmakers so it's really great to see our passing game look superb in this game. I think when when you look at the uh, at uh, the play of our running, it did it was kind of off in this game a little bit. Unless you look for the bright spot at the very end, very end of the game where we tried to take the air out of the ball, and I believe the concentration needs to be to run the ball up the middle between our guard center and other and, and t our two guards in our center. That lane was open most of the time in this game. And we had a lot of plays that were designed to bounce outside. So I looked for Alabama to correct that and to continue to run up the middle. That's what we did in the end of the game with, when it just happened to be Brian Robinson in the game, but we ran him up the middle and uh, he gained a really good amount of guardage. So I think that we'll, uh, we'll do that. 
So if we clean up the mistakes, we clean up the penalties, you know, if we, if we do that, we're going to learn from this and we're going to be much better in the next game. And we're going to have to be because we got Ole Miss coming up, which we'll look at in the third segment. When Ole Miss comes, we go, to, we go to there to play Ole Miss, they're going to come out with the, how to exploit what same thing Texas a and did. So we got to correct those things. And if we do it, if we do our job and we learn from our mistakes, we're going to be a much better team when we take the field next Saturday against Ole Miss. Well, this is our second segment in the D.C. Capstone Report podcast. We thank you for listening to us. Again, this is D.C. with the podcast. In our second segment today, we're going to talk about our standout players of the game. First of all, we're going to look at the offensive side of the ball. Well, right off the bat, I think the number one offensive standout has to be John Mechie. Welcome to the game, John Mechie. And I think this is a great thing, great development for Alabama. We all knew that he had potential. We all we, we saw him in the A-Day game two years ago get the standout player of that game, and we knew what he could do. And he had a coming out party in this game. Why is that so big for the team? It's big for the team because we have now three wide receivers that are so explosive that can turn a game at any point. So you got to cover all three. That gives them limited ability to, to uh, double cover uh, some of our players. And when they do double cover, we've got a player running wide open that can take the ball to the house. So John Mechie is one of my offensive players of the game. Right behind him has to be Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle showed his uh, speed in this game. Uh, he showed his athleticism in this game. And there wasn't much for him to do in the, in the return game because of the uh, uh, lack of punting that took toward him. But there was a lot for him to do in the offense. In this game, he played, I think, all positions at wide receiver and was at running back in the backfield. I believe in one play, he even lined up as an H back. And so we got him in multiple positions. We got him uh, on mixed mismatches uh, against the defense. And there really wasn't anyone that could keep up with his speed when he ran that go route. That slant, uh, that, that turn and go route that we'd run so many times where he turned across the middle to go behind the wide receiver that was dragging in front of him. Uh, when he turned that into a go route, uh, he was wide open right down the middle of the field. And when he caught the ball, the ball was a little late getting to him. When he caught it, he was able to run, outrun everybody to the end zone. You're not going to catch him with the speed that he has. I think he's even quicker and faster this year than he was last year. And I give that a credit to our strength and conditioning coaches, which has really worked on the speed. And John Mitchie has, as, as Jalen Waddle says, sneaky speed. He showed that in this game as well. The third standout player of the game on offense has to be Mac Jones. Now, I can't say enough good things about Mac Jones. He, he, did, he was superb in his passing in this game. He did a great job and he recovered uh, in this game, led his team back let in this game after that got, they made it 14-14. Uh, th this team didn't quit. Uh, this team uh, showed their fight. Uh, this team was able to overcome adversity. I think that goes back to the leadership that you find in your quarterback. And Mac Jones uh, is, did a great job in this leadership. His athletic ability is unquestioned. He's leading passer in the nation right now with a 222.7 passer rating. Uh, after after two games. So uh, he has the weapons at his disposal. I said before the season started that all Mac Jones had to do is play Mac Jones' game. Don't try to be like Jalen. Don't try to be like Tua. Don't try to be like anybody else. Just play the game within yourself like Mac Jones. When he does that, he's on. Uh, he, he had some pinpoint passes in this game that were great. He also had some passes that were underthrowed or overthrowed. Uh, he had one to Jalen Wall that was underthrow that Jalen turned into a touchdown. You can do that when you have great wide receivers. So trust your wide receivers. Make the throws that you can make, and he will all uh, he'll he'll always do good if he does that and plays with himself. So my outstanding players of this game or my standout players for the offense were John Mitchie, Jalen Waddle, and Mac Jones. Now let's move to the defensive side of the ball. And I think some people were questioning Alabama's defense in this game, but I think they played a superb defensive game. We had some blow, uh, some blown coverages uh, that were due to individuals having the wrong assignments, but it wasn't due to uh, inability to play. Those things can be corrected. So I, I, I think this was a really good learning experience for some of the young defensive players. And in this game, we had some standouts, and the number one standout has to be freshman Malachi Moore. He wears number 13. If you're not familiar with him, make yourself familiar with him. Malachi Moore did a great job in this game. But not only did he do a great job, 
he did a great job learning throughout the game. I've heard that he's a great learner. He, he, he likes to study and learn. And one of the reasons he won the starting job over Brian Branch, another great uh, uh, athlete, was that he got in the books and learned the playbook. It's clear that he knows the playbook uh, in order to and know what position they're in at different times. He does a great job of doing that. He had an interception that was exceptional. He had several pass breakups. And he had some really good uh, tackles in this game. So I am excited about the upside from Malachi Moore, a freshman, uh, and did a great job in this game. Uh, the second standout player of the game might be somebody that you've overlooked, but it's number 48, Fenderian Mathis. Fenderian Mathis. You know, Fenderian Mathis did a great job in this game. If you, if you were to go back and look at his play on the line, uh, he did a really good job of, of keeping containment, uh, of, press, of pressing the middle, uh, beating his man on several occasions, made some outstanding tackles. Uh, his uh, elevation of his game has helped the ones around him, the young ones like Justin Aborgaby and Byron Young playing in that second sophomore year. The play of Fenderian Mathis has, has allowed them to do even more. So I think uh, with LeBron Ray and Fenderian Mathis and Justin Aborgaby and, and Byron Young and Christian Barmore we, and DJ Dale, we are set at that middle uh, part of that line. So I really think, barring injuries, this could be one of the best defensive lines as they grow and as they mature. And Fendarian Mathis is one of, the, one of the big reasons of his play in this Texas A&M game can really launch him into a big career at Alabama. Uh, finally, my, my, my third and final standout player of this game on defense is Christopher Allen, number four. We've been wondering if Christopher Allen, who's going to step up? Is it going to be Ben Davis or Christopher Allen at that other outside linebacker job? Well, after the first two games, it's clear to see that Christopher Allen has really elevated his play. Elevated his play to a point where he's making plays all over the field, making tackles, making sacks, pressuring, pressuring the quarterback. And I believe he really did a good job in, in this game. And I think the upside for him is, is really good. Uh, I would love to see Ben Davis, since he's a local favorite here, get on the field. But in my opinion, Christopher Allen has showed his uh, performance on the field to be the one that's nailed down the starting role at that other outside linebacker. So my defensive players of the game against Texas A&M were Malachi Moore, Fendarian Mathis, and Christopher Allen. Well, we come to the third and final segment on today's DC Capstone Report. I thank you for tuning in and listening. And in this third and final segment, we're going to preview the game against Ole Miss, the Ole Miss Rebels. Going in there into Vault Hemingway Stadium, we play a night game on Saturday, October the 10th. No, we're talking about another uh, tropical storm hurricane coming our way by Friday, Saturday. Uh, could that rain be right over top of Oxford, Mississippi? If it is, it may change the game of all the things I'm about to tell you. But if we play in a regular uh, weather, I look for Alabama to go in and really be able to dominate in this game. I think Alabama corrects the mistakes that they made against Texas A&M and they're ready. But they need to be because I know Lane Kiffin is going to come out with an opportunity to be the first um, coach that coached with Nick Saban to beat him as a head coach. Right now, Coach Saban is 20-0. and 0. He's going on a string where, uh, here where, he, where he's uh, going to face uh, uh, Jimbo Fisher. Uh, uh, and he's won that one. And then Lane Kiffin, then Kirby Smart, and Jeremy Pruitt, four coaches in a row that have coached under Coach Saban in the Saban tree. And Nick, and, and I know that uh, Lane Kiffin would like to be the first one to beat him in a game. So he's going to go out, all out in this game. So Alabama has to be prepared. What do we have to prepare for? Well, we have to prepare for the backs to catch the ball out of the backfield, which Lane Kiffin loves anyway. But we see how Texas A&M exploited that. So we've got to watch for them to catch the ball out of the backfield. We've got to watch for the tight ends crossing over the middle. And we've got to watch for gadget plays. Uh, you know, they're coming off a big victory in overtime there at Kentucky. They're high, uh, got, a, got a real good momentum, and they're excited. So look for them uh, to come in and try to do something early uh, to take the momentum away from Alabama. What Alabama has to do in this game is run the ball first. I know we're talking about coming off a great performance in Texas A&M where we've thrown the ball, but we can't just rely on passing the ball. We've got to run the ball to set up the pass. Why? Texas A&M took away the run. They played really well across the front line of scrimmage and took away the run in most instances, but they gave up the big plays. Well, in the game against uh, Tech, Kentucky, Ole Miss gave up over 400 yards rushing in that game. 
So if they're going to give us rushing, we've got to be able to run the ball. So I think we go in there, we establish the run, make them try to come up, and then we hit them deep over the middle on play action passing with Mechie and Waddle and Devonta Smith. And we're going to have a great running game and we're going to have a great passing game. But I look for us to have to rebound our rushing in this game and have some more yards rushing. Um, one thing we have to do is limit our turnovers and limit our mistakes. We've got to clean that up. We've got to learn from the Texas A&M game. We've got to get the turnovers. Uh, we don't have, need to have any turnovers. We need to get more takeaways. We had two takeaways in the Texas A&M game, really good for our defensive backs. First pick six in quite a while with Daniel Wright, and then the Malachi Moore interception. So we've got to continue to concentrate on that, some takeaways ourselves, and we got to, we got to limit our penalties so it wouldn't thwart our drives. Uh, if we have, if we we would have had a couple of drives stopped by penalties if we didn't have such great athletic receivers uh, and an athletic team to be able to come back and and, uh, and 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 make great plays that allowed us to have touchdowns on third and long. So, uh, big overall picture of this game against uh, Ole Miss is to run the ball effectively to set up the pass. We have some great explosive plays in the passing game if we do that limit our turnovers, limit our mistakes, limit our penalties, and, and go out and play Alabama football uh, where we don't are concerned about anything but doing our best on every play. If we do that and do our job, we're going to come out of uh, there with a victory. I look for Ole Miss to score because they're scoring, so I'm going to pick a high-scoring game here. I'm picking Alabama to win in Vault hemingway Stadium, 56-28. to 28. Well, this is DC with the DC Capstone Report. Thank you for tuning in and listening, and we look forward to bringing this to you each and every week. Please uh, retweet it, share it, like it, to get the word out there so that others can enjoy the podcast as well. Thanks, and have a great week, and roll tide.